Okay, so uh, thank you everybody. My name is uh, Darren Barnes, and I work for the Office for National Statistics uh, in the UK. And I'm here today to talk about uh, a success story from the previous CSV comp uh, back two years ago, uh, and a tool that we used to actually transform uh, the uh, pretty handcrafted human readable spreadsheets that we create on a daily basis in the kind of more useful formats. Uh, before I actually show you a demo of the tool, though, I'm going to kind of go through some of the, uh, some of the, the things that we have to go through and, and the reasons why um, we, we had to, to get to, to solve this problem. So OMS produces thousands of spreadsheets every year on the website, and we've become increasingly efficient at crunching the numbers and turning that handcraft thing from a, to, to produce a sausage machine like a cake that we throw out. Um, the, the actual underlying structures in terms of uh, the data we have no longer exist for us to be able to get our hands on that data in a machine readable way. And we become so good at actually making the, 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 actual, the, the Excel spreadsheets as good as they can be on the website that we've absolutely, at the, at the cost of everything underneath it in terms of the systems that we use to, to build those things. So, I'm in a unique position. I can actually go to a desk of a colleague and say, any chance you can give me a source information, a flat, thin file format of the data you produce each month? And they go, yeah, that's no problem. I got SAS, I can run something, and it'll give you a nice CSV. Fantastic. I should be able to then go put that on the website so we can use it better. Oh, sorry, we can't publish that website. And the actual data is in there, it's, it's a hand it's all handcrafted, but I actually need to create new Excel because I need to do my uh, aggregations or I need to do kind of disclosure control methodologies on it. And so on and so on. Because I can't afford to go back to the IT department and say, can you do this thing in SAS for me? Can you uh, re engineer some of the tool that will help me actually get that information out automatically? So it's cheaper and more cost effective and, and quicker for me to chuck it in Excel, do all the work I need to do, and then give it to you guys to put on the, on the website. So it's an absolutely uh, the, the full cost of being able to do anything useful in OpenS with the data that you have. But don't get me wrong. You know, we can continue to kind of cross that bridge, get the data out there on the website for people to use if they want to kind of cut it and dice it and slice it in ways they want to. And it's not going to tumble, the bridge is not going to fall, but it's a bit rickety and we need to kind of move on in this, in this kind of uh, new age away from the kind of 50 years worth of expertise that we've built up, build in some of those spreadsheets that we saw the keynote uh, speaker uh, and we become increasingly uh, done that. The good thing for ONS, uh, in the next few years, we're actually looking to completely re-engineer our system. So we're not looking to uh, rely on third-party tools to transform our data or deconstruct it back into kind of machinery or formats. We're actually looking to rebuild our entire technical state. There's a whole piece of enterprise architecture going on at the moment to make sure that our data collection, our analysis, and our dissemination platforms all work together. So we actually shore up instruction and get the foundation right so we can, we can get that data flowing through systems and not rely on, uh, on, on manual data wrangling and feeding and sort of pulling the hair that I used to have on the head. So, um, before we hit that sort of nirvana, uh, we still got a lot of work to do. I can't simply uh, expect the guys in the, in the tech department to completely re-engineer legacy systems from over 20 years in a matter of weeks. It's going to take a few years to do so. So I can't stop doing the open data thing. We can't just sort of say, well, it, it's okay, it's fine. Uh, people can wait until we've actually rebuilt our systems. We've still got a lot of work to do. And it's still, it is probably a much more steeper scale than that as well, to be quite fair. Um, but actually what we should be doing is making the point of using a tactical solution now to understand what our data needs are, what our users need from our data, and actually work in parallel with those guys who are going to deliver our platforms and deliver our services going forward. So we can learn a lot of information, and to do that, to say, we need a sort of tactical solution uh, in the bag uh, in order to do so. Right, so, we, go to the next slide. So, sorry about this, a bit small, isn't it? Um, <coughs> two years ago, in yeah, this very room, actually, I met this guy, you can't quite see him, but he is he's sitting in the right there. And his name is Dave McKee, aka Dragon, and he is a, he was working for a company called Scraper Wiki. And Scraper Wiki, a great bunch of guys, I've got their website, we've got lots of lovely kind of online tools to scraping PDFs and so on. And he delivered a talk in this room, 
um, on XY Path, which is a tool those guys use. It's a kind of transformation tool. And for, part, for the previous 12 months, I've been trying to fight with our IT department to get them to build something for me that will allow me to kind of take our spreadsheets and make them more usable online. And so when I kind of listened to Dave do his talk, um, I, uh, I almost wet myself excitement because this guy was actually offering me something that I've been fighting so hard and being told uh, by our IT department. What do you expect? Do you want this thing to be any hands over his trousers, put a cape on and leave tall buildings? Get out, man, you can't do this stuff. So this guy, when he told me this, I basically kept him hostage for about an hour after uh, his talk. Uh, and we, you know, we kind of cooked together for the next 12 months, uh, designing and uh, building and developing the tool we call a data again. So, um, that's our tactical solution. Um, we basically have a tool now for about 40 months, and I'll give a demonstration in a second. But it's based on a, a, a Python uh, set of libraries. Uh, in Python, it's a very simplistic kind of uh, programming style. We use command lines to run things. There's not a fancy UI to, to actually access this thing, and that was the point. We wanted to make it functional. We wanted it to do, we wanted to focus more on deconstructing those spreadsheets, and that was the important part. It wasn't about making it look pretty. Okay, so if I just come out with this. Um, as I said, there's no front end, there's no kind of web browser for this. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the different things that we have uh, to work with, and you would have seen. Uh, some really good examples of some bad spreadsheets from the earlier keynotes, Peter. <laughs> and this is the kind of this is the kind of sort of stuff that we have to work in in our app. So you can see it's got uh, word cells, it's bold, it's got rows, it's probably got hidden columns and hidden rows, multiple tabs, you've got content tabs telling you about the data set. It's probably formulas sat in the back of it. The usual kind of stuff that we have to deal with you know, on a daily basis. And don't get me wrong, it's great for people who want to use those things. You can look at them, you can kind of see them in logical chunks, you can even probably print it out quite nicely and take it away in meetings. But obviously for this day and age, that's not good enough for me to adapt and evolve. So um, what we do with the, uh, the data data tool is, uh, we have to set up, and obviously not a right of data code for you guys in this instance, but we actually set up some, uh, some, some um, recipes, and uh, it basically instructs data data uh, what file to go look at, uh, where things are in the spreadsheet, so we can pick them up and actually do that transformation, uh, transformation piece of work. It's just literally saying, this is where my set of uh, observations are, this is where my set of variables, these are the variable IDs. It will strip things up we don't want to, to, to use in, this, in the CSV. It will ignore the uh, formulas and actually correct those, so we're actually getting real numbers rather than just um, uh, the formulas behind the scenes and actually forging a bit of detail. So if I just, uh, like I said, we didn't, um, we didn't do anything particularly clever with the UI, but we do have a sort of simple click to run, so it's a command line based thing, and it basically says, there's a spreadsheet in my folder called this, and here's the recipe, go and run that recipe against this spreadsheet, and it'll generate some files. So we've done some sort of clever jiggery pokery, um, just to kind of let it run, and actually run through very slowly, this thing kind of normally takes about 0.1 seconds to run. But it's going through and it's actually picking up two spreadsheets that are in that folder. Uh, it's looking through all the different tabs that are in that folder, it's looking at all the columns, all the rows, where their observations are, and it's merging things together as we speak to actually provide us then with uh, a CSV that we can then load into our, our data repository. And that data repository then allows us to transform that spreadsheet we just saw and make it available in kind of JSON stack, JSON, XML, CSV, and so on. So now that's actually done, what it does is it gives us a number of different spreadsheets, this is the way we actually uh, present the, uh, the data set online. And one of the neat little things that we do have that, um, that uh, the data does is allows us to kind of, there's, well, there's a load of validation things anyway, but actually it serves a <coughs> spreadsheet for us so we can actually see and make sure we, we've, we've uh, instructed database to pick the right things up. So it's color coded for us. To make sure we have made an obvious mistake, like telling time is in column B, or you know, where my dimension sets are, my dimension items that all live together. So I can quickly go through and make sure that I've done it right. So that's quite a neat little feature. Um, and if we go back in, so these are the actual data sets that we've done. So we open that up, and you can see now, so basically it's taken all that data from those two spreadsheets, probably about 10,000 records, wherever it might be, and transformed it into a sensible looking file. 
And we can actually change the template of this so that we can have it uh, add extra columns in, for instance, for our statistical purposes, we have attributes like unit of measure, uh, whether it's a count, whether it's a percentage, whether it's a ratio, and all those sort of things. So we can change the way that that thing is output uh, and, and also make sure that you know, if we've got central headings at the top, if our dimensions and so on. And that's the sort of thing that we can put into our, into our machines and actually will make sense of that computer. No longer does it have to, uh, you cannot consume the spreadsheets as you've seen uh, before. We've had plenty of talks going on about that over the last two days. The spreadsheets that we use are absolutely not uh, uh, in any shape or form recognisable to a computer. So having this sort of tool there has, has really kind of um, has revolutionised the way that actually we'll be we'll start to take forward uh, that data. So that's really, that's all data baker is. Uh, you know, it's a set of, um, uh, it uses XY path, which is the thing that underpins the, uh, all the libraries and things that it uses. Don't ask me about pandas and Python because I'm not a technical person. I'm just a second hand car salesman who basically goes out and does all the, the donkey work with the, the, the statisticians to make sure they can get this paper in the right way. And there are some really clever people that, uh, that I work with who do all the recipes and create all the kind of uh, things that, that do uh, the clever work in the background. I think that. For me, it's about the OpenS now coming into a, into a position whereby we're starting to get skills into our operational teams. So before, we always had to rely on IT department. It would take six months to actually look at your, your, your requirements, and another 12 months to build it, and then actually give you something that didn't work. Whereas we're having the sort of skills now in our statisticians, in our operational teams, that are allowing us to create these kind of these, these scripts that can do the transformation work for us. So we're, we're starting to evolve as, as an organisation of not just statisticians and economists kind of putting the numbers out, but actually real um, data scientists you know, bringing this together. Uh, so, um, let's go on to this. So it's all available, it's all open source. Um, it's available on the GitHub. You've got installers for um, Windows machines only, because we don't use like a Max in the, in the, in the ONS. All the documentation is available there. It's, as I said, it's all open source, free of charge to use. Uh, so if you want to have a look at it, uh, be my guest. We've also forked off another branch of this um, that uh, we use in OS, which we're starting to uh, create and put name enhancements and things on. So, uh, let's go back to the slides. Okay, that was show and tell. But one of the things that we're interested in, so I did mention the tactical solutions. We don't want these things in for long haul. They're not supposed to be there. Forever, us relying on these third party mechanisms that we're going to transform our data. We need to get the upstream processing done correctly so that it's actually, you know, as Rufus is going to um, uh, talk about the frictionless movement of data from, from machine to machine to machine and actually up on the website. That's where we need to be and that's what we're going to. But I would like to kind of you know, develop um, the data data tool further. So, in, in terms of things like um, output in RDF, for instance, or output in JSON. Um, better validation techniques so we can find out where things go wrong. Because the idea behind this is we create the recipe once and then we, we use it all the time. It's not supposed to be something we have to be manually uh, adjusted. So some validation rules where we get users who are creating spreadsheets and they have a capital letter that starts with rather than a small lowercase one previously or they may have added one of those silly blank uh, columns in for, for no particular reason at all. So those sort of validation tools we try to build in. Um, we'd also like, at the moment, it kind of ignores all the metadata that's available in the spreadsheets too. So we'd like to perhaps look at how we could um, have a, a different part of the recipe looking at that metadata and pulling that out as well. And it kind of inspired me with Jerry Tennyson's uh, this, uh, talk yesterday about CSD in the web, whereby, you know, if we have a sort of JSON format for the metadata, we can put a linked header in uh, to, to link the two files together. Or well, maybe that's something I can go back and we can talk about uh, introducing in the next, uh, the next version of this thing. Um, so, last but not least, um, I said the screen with you guys some fantastic stuff with web tools, check them out. Uh, I got a link here to their box about how they built Data Baker and some of the things uh, that they use underneath the hood, so you can check that out. I've shown you the GitHub page, and this slide obviously will be up on the, um, uh, on the website later on. And obviously if you want to get in touch, my details are on there as well. Uh, but we really encourage people to use this thing. We put it out as open source. We want this to be a community tool. We're not interested in being you know, something that just the Office of National Statistics excuses, but actually something that uh, they, because we all know how difficult these spreadsheets are to work with. And if this can help anybody do some stuff, 
and also you know, help us feed into improvements going forward, how we might uh, improve the documentation around things, uh, what other suggestions or improvements you might have, feel free, we'd love to, to, to hear from you uh, and get that feedback. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you.